This video is sponsored by Trugo Republic, the precious metals experts. Talk to one of their experts today about diversifying your portfolio to assure your future financial security. Find their contact information in the description below and pinned in our first comment. James Kaufman, World News Report today, March 13th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had two earthquakes today, stronger than a 6.0. Well, we had a 6.0 that the USGS actually covered right here. Came in at a 5 on the DYF5. Did you feel it? A 5 on the shake map, and it's green on the pager. Depth of 50.4 kilometers. Now we've had a second 6.2 earthquake in this region right here, and it's not being shown here on the USGS, but we will show it to you. Bouncing over to volcanoesandearthquakes.com. First, we'll take a look at the 6.0 that the USGS is covering in Papua New Guinea, right under a volcano that's in eruption and right near a bunch of, well, mixed up plate boundaries. Now we jump over here and we have a 6.2 that happened 58 minutes ago, right under all these volcanoes are either erupting or awakening. There is a plate boundary that actually works its way through there as well. So this 6.2 is not being covered by this USGS currently. We have detailed information on both of them. Let's take a look. First off, it looks like this was a 6.0. They have it at 50.4. That means the USGS is going to be the main source. And look at the French coming in at a 5.7. And for the other big quake of the day, a 6-2. Uh, this is Indonesia being the main source here. The French coming in at a 5-9. And the USGS actually coming in at a 5-8, which is why it doesn't show up on the map of, uh, on the USGS map. All right, let's move over to VolcanoDiscovery.com. We see the 6 point. Oh, here that was covered by the USGS. It does say it happened on March 14th tomorrow, although that area is already enjoying March 14th currently. Let's get some earthquake details here. This is going to come from the USGS, so it's going to be everything we've seen before. Again, we're on VolcanoDiscovery.com. What we can learn here is that 0.9 atomic bombs worth of energy were released with this earthquake. And here we can see that the 6.0 earthquake happened right on Papua New Guinea. All right, let's take a look at what we have. A 6.0 out of the USGS, Germany, a 5.9, a 6.1 out of Indonesia, a 5.7 out of the French, a 6.0 out of the European Seismology Center, a 6.0 out of the International Research Institute on Seismology, a 6.0 out of the Italians, and the Australians came in at a 5.9. Back to volcanoesandearthquakes.com, there's that 6.2 58 minutes ago. The main source, again, is going to be Indonesia. The French coming in at 5.9, the USGS 5.8. The depth is 10 kilometers, which is the default depth when they don't know how deep it was. Heading back over to VolcanoDiscovery.com, we see the 6-2 here called out. And again on March 14th tomorrow, well, they're enjoying March 14th there currently. Now they call the 6-0 a strong earthquake. They've called the 6-2 a very strong earthquake. Let's all remember a... 6-1 is 10 times stronger than a 6-0, and a 6-2 is 20 times stronger than a 6-0. That's how quick these things move. So here, what do we look at? A 6-2 reported by, well, the Indonesian Geophysical Agency, Indonesia, 
1.9 atomic bombs worth of energy versus 0.9 atomic bombs worth of energy. So you can see how quickly this moves up as we move up the Richter scale. Now, although this one did not happen on land, let's say that it did happen where we have a lot of active volcanoes and on a plate boundary as well. All right, this note is very important for this earthquake. A depth given at 10 kilometers often means that the depth of the quake could not be determined with sufficient accuracy. So let's get started here. We have the reporting agency here, the Indonesian Seismology Agency coming in at 6-2, the Europeans a 5-8. Never seen such a difference. The Germans a 5-7. We've got the French coming in at a 5.9. So Germany came in with a smaller quake than the French. The Italians with a 5.7. The USGS with a 5.8. International Research Institute on Seismology, a 5.8. And finally, the Australians come in also with a 5.8. Now, the depths are very varied. 43 kilometers, 10 kilometers, unknown, 27 kilometers, 35 kilometers, 10 kilometers, 41 kilometers. I will say that the Indonesian agency does not know how deep it is, which makes you wonder if they know how strong it was. They have come in at the highest. We see 27 kilometers, 41 kilometers, the 10 default, 35, 27, 10, 43, all over the board. So, what did we find out? Well, we found out that we definitely had a 6-0, i.e. the USGS and several other agencies, some even calling it stronger. And then this 6-2 called out by the Indonesian Seismology Agency was actually rated much smaller by most every other agency. The Indonesian folks did not have a good depth. It looked like a lot of the other people thought they had good depths, although they were all over the board with their depths. So the first time for a long time, we've had a little bit of earthquake activity. We will finish this off trying to take a look at that 5.8 right there. This was a 5-1, and that's that 5-8 that Indonesia's calling a 6-2. Now, they don't say who the source is here, but we do see a 26.5 kilometer depth, and we could go match that to the chart we just looked at, volcanodiscovery.com, and figure it out. It's not going to be called out by the Indonesians. This is probably a USGS call at 5.8. Eight. With that said, God bless each and every one of you guys. Share, subscribe, and always remember that anything's possible in Bizarro World.